Hello everyone. Today I've decided I'm going to unbox my Mighty Morphin Power Rangers King Sphinx uh, evil villain character. Um, if you've been watching the channel, you know I picked this up at Target on clearance sale a week or two ago for about uh, $10. Uh, I had been thinking uh, about maybe just leave him in the box and think, uh, thinking, well, he's not very popular, so maybe um, he'll be really worth something later on to other collector, you know, collectors 20 years from now because no one will have bought him and so there, no one will have him. And then I thought, well, no, maybe that there'll be tons of boxes and of course, or there's tons that haven't been bought and they'll eventually they will be bought by somebody when they're low enough and they'll be you know, shelved or saved until 20 years from now and there'll be tons of them. And then I thought, it really doesn't matter anyway. I don't buy, you know, toys in order to resell them 20 years from now. So what am I thinking? I just buy toys to uh, enjoy them. So whether I leave them in the box to enjoy them in the box or take them out of the box, it's for me. It's not, you know, I'm not planning on uh, saving these as an investment like Beanie Babies or something. So with that out of the way, I, uh, there's really no reason to leave them in the box. Uh, the other thing is uh, I had to watch some of the... Um, the videos other people unboxing this character and I had originally thought hey this is a pretty cool looking character and then when I started watching the other unboxing videos I found that uh, most of the reviewers really were down on him, didn't like him. Now I do know that they probably bought him at full price at $30 and from that point of view I, I really understand where they're coming from and even from $10 now I do kind of understand where they're coming from. Uh, their main complaint was about the paint on the t teeth uh, around the teeth and in the mouth, and we'll get to that, but that there's no paint there at all was their main complaint. And that, uh, in the picture here that it's black with white teeth and that there should be something there. And uh, so I had watched those videos and was thinking about them when I, before I made my video about price and quality and thought, you know, th that would be very difficult to paint that little area in there. Um, and I'm going to eventually try to paint that myself. That's another reason I'm unboxing them, because I want to... Um, practice on this character rather than a Masters of the Universe character when I do my first uh, experimenting painting on figures because I haven't done it before and I'm going to try it. I'm going to try using some of this paint, just some cheap acrylic and this to do the black in the mouth and then the, the white on the teeth. Uh, although I won't just go straight to white on the teeth, I think I'll go black and then I'll put brown on the teeth maybe and then maybe yellow and then white on top of that so that there's you know more depth and stuff to them. And I'll show you that hopefully at the end of this video but we'll go on to do that. Uh, I'll edit to that together. So, um, but yeah, so anyway, so I made a video about price and quality, and, and I thought that these things were hand painted. Now, I just found a video on YouTube today um, after another person made a comment. Uh, shoot, I should shout you out. Uh, if I could remember your name, I would. Uh, and I apologize for that. Shout you out anyway, and shout out to my friend Monkey Boy as well. Uh, anyhow, um, what was I saying here? Yes, uh, I found a good video today about how action figures are made and plastic toys in general. It was actually a 10 year old video um, and it, it goes through the factory. You can see all the factory workers doing all the different tasks of the injection molding and clipping the parts off the injection, uh, the, the, the piece that comes out of the injection molding and cleaning them up and, and then how they, do, how they hold them and ma uh, mask them. So all the painting it turns out, there is no brushing going on but it's not automated going down a machine either. It's going down an assembly, a belt basically, and a person takes the applies a mask that's usually some kind of grasper spoon. You'll see in the video. I'll make a link to the video so that you can watch it. Uh, and it shows you how they apply the mask to something and then they hand spray it generally. The person spraying that piece uh, and then they take it out of the mask and then drop that piece on you know and then add and take the next piece or it's all in a bucket. And so uh, it's really fascinating to see the video in the first five minutes goes through how uh, plastic uh, uh, motorcycle um, and ramp was made for I think it was a McDonald's toy that they show uh, the second part of the video from the f about five minutes to mi uh, ten minutes is about uh, uh, like something like a Hot Wheels car so it shows the metal being molded and then the plastic molded and all that and, and the paint applied uh, and then the, uh, the at the very end they, they talk about some kind of I like eye details um, how some of those are applied as well with there's a little dot machine um, that comes down and does, that does apply the maybe the eyes, the pupils of the eyes, and things like that detail. So, um, <clears throat> so if you watched my video about uh, price and quality, I would like to say I probably I am wrong about hand painting. I don't think there's any brushes involved, but they are hand painted as far as there's a person applying a mask and then spraying on the paint. So if you guys would like to learn more about it, I really want to recommend the video that I've linked 
uh, below in my uh, in this video, and uh, it's only 12 minutes long total. Like I said, you can only watch the first five and a half, and you'll get all the details you need about this, except for the eyes, which would be the last two minutes of the video probably. Um, so without any more, let's go ahead and cut into this uh, box and take a look at this figure that I still think is pretty cool looking character. Maybe the figure is not uh, up to snuff as far as other action figures go. Like I say, I'm a kind of a noob with all this, so my opinion is the opinion of a noob who doesn't have that much experience except for when I was a child, a kid, and, you know, we had less expectations of figures then. We just kind of, I mean, yeah, we enjoyed what they were. So I can get them out of here without breaking anything. I just like his Egyptian look to him. All right, yeah, that's yeehaw. I am an Egyptian evil god. You worship me. And he has some interesting looking hands here. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Some of the voices that I do uh, tend to <coughs> work hard on my throat there. We've got a neat uh, fire effect of some kind. Um, I'll find a use for that. Excuse me. Uh, they have a picture of how that's applied. I doubt I'll get to do that quite right. <clears throat> Let me see if I can jimmy this <clears throat> staff out of here. That's a nifty staff. <clears throat> Boy, something caught my... Anyway, excuse me for my <clears throat> coughing and straining here. Crying. <clears throat> Very cool. Kind of like a shepherd's staff. Um, for you grabbing the neck of your sheep. Um, but I don't know exactly what the Egyptians were using that for. And how does this get applied to that somehow around up through there? Or you just got to figure that out yourself. You stick it up in like here, sir, or no, you go down to it. It would be a lot easier than going up to it. Yeah, it's like this. It's like that. Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> What is that all about? I have the power of not He-Man. I have the power of Ra. <coughs> Excuse me. I have... I have something else to give you. I have big feet. I am Sasquatch of the Egyptian desert. And you shall never see me again. <laughs> Look out. I will hide and you will not find me unless you are also Sasquatch. Da da da. Sasquatch of the desert, eh? Or is that what you are, Sphinx? Okay. Well, what can I say about him? Let's see. Um, yeah, like I like the size. Uh, oh, that's right. So this is kind of a soft rubber material. Which goes good. Uh, let's see about his pose ability. I've never had a figure that poses at the chest like that before. So he can do crunches and stuff, huh? So that's what the new uh, He-Man Revelations figures can do that the uh, Origins can't. They can, they can do these stomach crunches. More uh, parts of articulation. Hey, look, man. I can really do myself some yogi positions. All right, excellent. In case you want your figures to do yoga, <clears throat> then you should get the figures with 30 points of articulation instead of 16 or whatever origins have. His tail is going to get in the way of any major yoga, but maybe he can do yoga with his tail. Stand it up like this. Special tail yoga. Yes, look at that. He has got some, some gifts here, folks. I'm going to reach out and touch my toes. Reach out and touch my toes. All right, I'm going to make this video too long if I uh, just keep singing and messing like I do in videos. I don't know if you guys all appreciate my um, playing with toys and goofing so much. Alright, so his head turns quite a bit. Good articulation in the head. We can get him almost as far as a human head anyway to the side. And he can turn all the way around, which is unnatural. And bend back pretty good so he can kind of... Man, you can really uh, oh, get him stretching out here. Maybe make a yoga video with these characters. How's that sound, folks? The first ever action figure posing yoga video. It's probably not the first ever. Everything's been done, hasn't it? You find out somebody else has done it, and not only done it, they've done it better. But that's all right. Sometimes the way to go is just to make a little bit of everything, and that way you're, you're different that way. All right.
Yeehaw, that's pretty cool. Hey, check it out. What's that pose all about? He's like, uh, like a rock star, just pointing at all the fans. Just, yuck. Come on. Let's hear it for Iron Maiden. Yeah, he kind of looks like an Iron Maiden, uh, an Eddie kind of guy. He'd go along with the Power Slave album. Yes. Oh, right. Mm. How I want to be a power slave. A power slave. Why can't I remember the lyrics when I want to sing a power slave? Oh, yes, let's get him down on his knee. Oh, how I like. Is this knee bent? Oh, I'm not used to these kind of things. This is pretty neat. All right. All this crazy articulation. You can really get him into some... Some uh, Bruce Dickinson kind of poses. Yes, power, some power poses. Yeah! Oh. This should take this off and use this as his microphone. Da -da 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 -da. All right, guys. Am I bugging you with all my singing here? Or are you enjoying this? Or does it matter? Is it just do what you want? Do what you want. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, he's very posable. I don't know why people don't like this guy. All right, we got some other hands in here. Let's finish up the uh, unboxing. Again, I guess people don't like him because of the paint and the quality. They feel like, and definitely for thirty dollars, there's not a lot of different paint applications on him. When you see the video how the paint's applied, you're going to see that they would have had to have before the head was put on. They had to put a, a mask applied to this spray it in there the black uh, and then send that to another station another mask applied spray the white over the teeth um, and those would be just kind of covering up this area so they they probably could have done it um, obviously that's what they did for the rest of it and so they, that's that's how they apply all these paints the mask and then the, and these uh, I guess these light color blue that add a little to the muscle he's supposed to be made out of stone is that why he's kind of this this color, man, it's pretty poseable. I kind of like the way he's super poseable. Extra hands here. Okay, so he's got a closed fist. We could give him and an another kind of just a another smaller hand for holding uh, weapons and looks more like that would be for holding a laser or something if he had one. I guess it can that can be for holding this maybe. I don't know. I don't know if you can get the the ball down through there. Sure you can if you want to stretch it out. But I don't know if I'm going to bother with it because it works fine in this end. So that would seem like that's for holding a gun. I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you get out of the way somehow? All right. Um, I'm going to have to get a camera person someday. All right. So yeah, another of the main complaints I saw in the other videos <clears throat> is how these wings attach. There's just a little ball and it looks like there's a little joint on here to let them swing, but that is hard to move with my fingers. Okay, it goes. Alrighty. We can move the hinge, but I guess this, uh, the way this attaches is not uh, preferable. Most people don't like it. And it's probably not going to hold up or, or stay in. It looked like people were having a real hard time making it stay in. I apologize to whoever it was video I watched that I don't remember. Was it Jay Bartlett? Um, yes, anyway. Uh, thank you to all the reviewers who make videos. I, I enjoy watching everybody else unbox. It's, it's always fun to watch people unbox their uh, toys and play with them. Um, I think I was watching Analog Toys doing one yesterday of a, a mask. Uh, old set, vintage set. It was just an awesome video. He's just a really cool guy. I think he's my age too. Let's see, is that hard to get in or not? I don't think it's that hard. It's so he's got little tiny holes in his back and this tiny little pin on the top with a little bit of a edge that's uh, supposed to catch inside. We call it or a hook or whatever. But how is he supposed to fly like an angel if he doesn't have his wings? Fly like an angel. So we gotta make it work today. All right. So I'm gonna just keep jamming here. We're jamming. We're jamming, we're jamming, we're jamming in the wings, oh lord. We're jamming. Did I get, that one looks like that one's in pretty good. 
Looks like that one's in pretty good. So this one, I think I got them in pretty pretty well here. Must be my uh, humidity, climate, or whatever it is, um, allows them to uh, go in without much problem here and <clears throat> even stay in. Are they going to stay in that well? It looks like it. So uh, I got a good one for my $10 purchase. Maybe they got better at the end, I don't know. What does he look like from your angle? Does he look like some kind of fallen Lucifer devil angel? Ah! That's what he ought to look like there now. The fallen Lucifer. No! No! Cast out of heaven! No! Why is heaven always up? And he's always falling down. Heaven's in the ground. Well, that's ancient mythology for you folks. People have always thought <clears throat> the under... Well, not always, but... I don't know. I'm just stating random stuff now. They always thought the hell, hell was in the underworld. Well, they just thought the underworld was underground, so maybe not hell. Man, he's just really just posable. I don't know. I hope I'm not doing anything dirty looking, but uh, just to happen to make him just he's jumping. Hey, Panama, jump! Might as well jump! Ow! Oh. I'll jump too! Go ahead, jump! Wow! My way to seems like a David Lee Roth uh, kind of. He's got all these just kind of moves that he loves to do. So hey, uh, hoo, uh, hoo. and can he do the moonwalk? That's the real question. Can he do the moonwalk? Will he do it for you? Let's see. How do you do the moonwalk? Right, you uh, you go like this. Okay, he puts this one up and slides the one back. The flat one slides. Not the one that's up, but the flat one slides. Yeah. Uh. Check it out. He's doing the moonwalk. I don't know if you can see it. I'm trying my best. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So there it is, guys. I've had my uh, unboxing fun. Um, saying way too many pieces of songs and uh, probably... Uh, but had a great time doing it, so I hope you've all enjoyed coming along and singing with me and uh, enjoyed this part of the unboxing fun. So, I really enjoy the posability of the character. I uh, like the, uh, I like the wicked look in his eyes. He's kind of, he, he kind of looks, um, like I see like Mark Hamill doing his Joker face or something. He's just like, <laughs> I'm gonna get you little rascals, yes. Yeah, uh, but his voice would be deeper and darker. I don't know. I don't know. And I definitely don't know what an Egyptian accent would be, other than some kind of British thing. So, yeah, I like that double jointed knee, kind of. It doesn't go double forward, but it doesn't need to. If he can do his karate kick and he can do his David Lee Roth, hua, hucha, yeah, I'm going to whip out some whip ass on you. Roundhouse. So is he going to be a uh, <clears throat> little, uh, who's the other guy there? Jean-Claude Van Damme? Little Jean-Claude Van Damme on your butt? <laughs> or is he some kind of, uh, yeah, he looks like uh, he'd be great in the old Conan movies too, right? The, the Conan, the Destroyer, when they had that kind of statue come to life at the end and he had to fight that. I would I would go for that if, uh, if Conan was a three and a quarter, uh, three and three quarter inch figure here. That'd be cool. To scale, I'm just like just a monster over him. Plus, he's got the wings and everything. He's just, I shall stomp you, little man. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I like him. I'm having good times uh, playing with him. I could go on and on like this. Uh, I just don't want to make the video go for too long. So, um, let me, uh, I guess, cut it here cut my fun short here folks and uh, we'll just go ahead and I'll start showing you how I do some of the paint I guess I'm just gonna apply some uh, black paint to into this mouth area you can see all any of that here um, and then uh, when that dries I'll go back over and start trying to dry brush the white and show you how that works um, and then we'll just show you the final product so thank you all for hanging with me if you've made it this far uh, I congratulate you and uh, Thank you very much for your uh, gold star and uh, yeah, here we go. Let's see. Let's see this painting go down. 
let's start the painting process. Okay, the first tip I gotta show you is that the brush I'm, I'm gonna start with, this is the smallest brush I have, and you can see uh, up close here that the bristles are quite spread out. Um, and so that's not gonna work very well uh, trying to paint my Michael Jackson impersonator's uh, <clears throat> black in his mouth there because it's very small in there and uh, I'm not going to mask it off. I'm going to do the best I can freehand to just get into the to the area there with this brush. So again, you can see from uh, up close, I guess, that's a pretty broad bristle. So if you've never done this kind of thing brush before, you, um, what you do is you use a little bit of saliva and you straighten up the tip and you get it kind of pointy. That's, you can get it even pointier than that. Sorry, I'm right-handed for the video here. Uh, you don't need to use a lot of saliva, it's more about a lips and things. So that's how you get a, a nice brush tip. Uh, make sure your brush is clean always before you do that. That's why I often wash my brushes with uh, dish soap and water um, between each use. Um, not that this stuff is super toxic or anything, um, but yeah, you definitely want to wash your brushes off. Uh, and I wouldn't do this if I was using any kind of paint that needed thinner or um, you know solvents of that kind then I think I just avoid that and probably you would dip the brush in thinner um, and, and hand use your hand or something to uh, get a point on it. So anyway that's the first tip because you're not going to be able to get in there to that little area with um, with a big broad brush especially with these kind of paints because this paints pretty thick stuff anyway. If I had uh, one of the inks um, which work better for this kind of thing I think that would be uh, better because you could just put a little ink in there and it would just kind of fill the space on its own without me having to kind of work it in. Um, this paint's a little thick, but uh, I've learned that if I dilute the paint, uh, then it doesn't work as well. Uh, I've learned from uh, acrylic, uh, it's a molecule that needs uh, enough acrylic to, to make a layer. Otherwise, if you, if you add too much water to it, it spaces out the acrylic molecules too much and they can't form a strong uh, bonding layer and then eventually the, the paint will just come off. So um, you can dilute acrylic with water, but not too much. And I'm not a real expert on it, so I just I leave it straight and put it on. So uh, enough of that. I'm going to come around to the other side and uh, I'll start trying to get this in there. It's going to be a little difficult for me working around the camera, so hopefully I won't make a lot of mistakes. All right. All right, I'm going to do my best. I hope this shows up all right and turns out all right. <clears throat> Let's see. So I'm going to put a little paint on uh, this uh, top from a salsa container. That's more than I'm going to need by a long, long shot, okay? Got to go back and re-wet my brush there. And okay, I'm going to just get in here. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to kind of take my eye off the camera because i got to really focus on what's going on in there. I'm not worried about the teeth at this point. I'm just trying to fill the cavity between his lips and mouth there. The teeth we're going to cover later with white. So trying to get it into that little crack there. Okay, that did fine. This is why I thought there's no way they could do this in a factory uh, quick and easy, but they do have masks that they, they employ, which would make it uh, not as difficult as what this is, obviously. Now you see I am painting these teeth black, even though you would think I wouldn't need to, but if you want the gap in between them to show, then you gotta paint everything black, and then you come back later and do the white. So that's why I'm painting the teeth black as well at this point. What will I say while well, I'm trying to concentrate on all this? Not very much apparently. So uh, how's your day going folks? Anything interesting in your neck of the woods? What's the price of onions as they used to say? All right, I'm almost done. I got just a tiny corner here to get into. Boy, difficult stuff here. There it is. Try not to shake. It's definitely easier when I'm not holding them up with the other hand. I think we're, we're pretty good there. You can see they're blackened in. The teeth are all blackened. We've covered all the area inside the mouth. Hope that looks all right. So it's wet still. So this is going to need to dry. Um, I, you know, really the best would be to let it dry at least an hour. Maybe longer. You want it to be really dry before you mess around putting other coats on top. I do anyway. I prefer to let stuff dry. It'd probably be totally dry in 10 minutes, but uh, I don't like to risk stuff. Uh, so I guess that's it for now. Um, did I make a little bit overspill so you can see maybe just a tiny overspill there on the lip? And maybe I can 
scrape that off with my fingernail before it's dried. Did that come off? So yeah, you can see you gotta have an eye for detail to do that. Because I don't really want to try to fix all this gray. I don't have a gray paint to try to fix outside to do his lips. And I'm not sure I want to do his lips in any other, you know, red or something. Not yet. This is my first time painting anything on any figure. So let's just see how the black and white comes out first before we try to do uh, anything else on him. You know, any details or try to do his muscles or anything like that. So, cause, you know, again, for me, he's a pretty good figure and I'm having fun with him already. Can't believe I didn't think of... Um, Freddie Mercury when I was dancing him around here or uh, even more the um, the swan song guy from Led Zeppelin's um, logo you know when he had the angel wings on there he kind of he kind of reminded me of the swan song guy especially when I had him kind of in his his Jesus pose his Christ pose ah! okay so I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll um, I guess I'm gonna try to show you how I do the white part that's gonna be the harder part um, well, it's, uh, it's kind of easier because I'm, I'm using a dry brush, basically, so I, I don't have to worry so much about it getting everywhere else. Uh, so that's it. I'm going to wash this off with water and wash this off with water and let this dry, and then we'll come back and uh, show you how to do the dry brushing of the teeth. Okay, now we're going to get started on the teeth. Um, so dry brushing technique, if you've never seen it, <clears throat> is basically um, what it sounds like. You want to just put a little paint on the brush and then you want to basically take as much off as you can so that the brush is uh, almost dry <clears throat> so that there's little very little paint on it because if I went in there right with this and try to get on the teeth it's just gonna run all over everywhere into the black areas so I brought me some napkins here so you can see now that may have taken off too much so I'm gonna have to figure this out here how this is gonna work um, let me try it again just want to take off enough that I'm not risking uh, run over. And now I'm just going to go real lightly, not putting pressure down. I'm just letting the brush fall onto the teeth. Uh, can you see this? Is that coming out? It's looking good so far. Uh, let's see. Is there enough light on it? Yeah, I'll try to bring it up there so you can see. All right, so. That's a little distant, little, little uh, detail so far. Let's see if we can add some more here without going back to add any more paint on the brush because the more you can go without adding paint on the brush, the better. The less risk you're going to take of uh, getting it into the black area where you don't want it. So you can see I've had very little paint on the brush, but I think you may be able to see that it's coming out onto the teeth there I've run out of paint so let me come back in and it's also drying on the brush so I may need to another thing I need to do often um, as the paint is drying on this brush is just stop uh, go back and wash the brush off and start again because it gets hard and, and then the tip doesn't work as well I just noticed out of the corner of my eye that the battery is also starting to flash so I'm going to quit here pretty soon, um, and I'll maybe finish up off camera just adding a little bit more white. Um, I think it's looking pretty good already, so that's basically the technique, guys. Yeah, I'll go ahead and turn off the camera now, see if I can get just a little more white on there, and, uh, and show you the final result. That's it. Okay, here he is, all finished. I added a few more coats and found that I didn't have to take off quite as much paint off the brush as I was doing. Um, I, would, you know, I was uh, erring on the side of caution, which I'm glad I did. In case you guys are learning for the first time, you definitely want to start with uh, less paint. But I found that I didn't have to take all the paint off. I could leave a little tiny bit on there and then kind of apply uh, to each teeth tooth more carefully without the camera in my way. And uh, I think it came out really good. Bring it up close here. This is really close to the camera. I'm surprised it's doing okay. I guess it's because there's no zoom going on and stuff here. But uh, yeah, I think it came out just fine. Probably took me all together 15 or 20 minutes of labor. Um, so you could obviously imagine that's not going to happen in a factory. But they do, like we said, uh, they have masks to do that. So I think it came out good. Uh, hopefully you guys got some ideas. You can try this on your own figures. Sorry, I got them sideways. 
It looks better this way, but that was better with the light. So, and one last time, the monster mash. Doo -doo 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 the monster mash. You do the monster mash. Wow. Wow. There he goes, guys. Okay. Thank you all for tuning in and uh, watching my unboxing and uh, reviewing and touching up the mouth video of uh, King Sphinx. And that's it. That'll do it, folks. Oh, yeah. He should have his wings on, but that's all right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.